So, hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over something really interesting and I know you're all going to love it. So, this is another video for my general education series. Sorry I haven't done one in a few weeks. Uh, but now I will be doing them sort of regularly like my uh, iOS apps and OSX apps playlist that I just started. So now I'm going to be uh, talking about the science, uh, the sci uh, I'm going to be talking about science, under that biology, under that evolution. Now not just any type of evolution, fruit evolution. You must be thinking, why is it called fruit evolution? Well, it's because not just animals, fruits evolve as well. So, I mean, no, you, uh, this doesn't seem very natural at all to you, but as you can see, this is really a thing, even though it's not the most natural of things, which I will explain in just a minute, it is true. Uh, so let's get started. I have created a little keynote presentation, which will be for download uh, in the description below. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? Okay, as you can see, I have a little fruit evolution uh, slideshow prepared for you. Uh, and so let's get started. Uh, as you can see, we just start off with fruit evolution. Uh, and now I'm going to be talking about what evolution actually is. Now before we actually get into evolution, I know what you know, I, I'm almost 100% sure that you know what evolution is, but I'm just going to tell you anyway just in case you don't know. Now I got this from Google Dictionary and the definition is the process by which different kinds of living organisms are, t are thought to have developed and diversified from earlier forms during the history of the earth. Uh, so I got that from Google Dictionary and the link to this will be down in the description below. So now, apart from what is evolution, why would a species evolve in the first place? Now there's three things that could have factors in evolution. Uh, first of all, it could be by chance, just it, their DNA mutates and they become an evolved species. Or it could be on purpose for the benefit of that species. Now, there's one more thing. If you think about it, the evolved species have a new trait that helps them live in the wild. Now, it's these traits that will help them survive. And the ones who survive will continue passing on their genes. And the ones that continue passing on their genes are the ones that will eventually survive. So those will be the only uh, remaining species of that species, making an evolved species. So that's how that works. And so that's why a species, w a species would evolve. Uh, but I'm not going to be explaining how a species would evolve, uh, but I might make a different video on that later. Uh, so for example, uh, we evolved from apes into humans like we are today. Uh, and for example, uh, we actually evolved into three different types of main humans. First of all, us, Homo sapiens, and then two other uh, species. Now those species, first of all, weren't as intelligent. So we were intelligent enough to know how to live, and since we were intelligent, we were the ones that survived, and now we're the only human or homo species currently alive. So apart from that, why would fruit need to evolve? There's nothing that it has, there's no aim for fruit in life. The plant could have an aim though, uh, to br continue its seeds, uh, to make sure they get to places and actually uh, make new trees or make new plants for that. But why would a fruit need to evolve? Well, let's take a look at some examples. And you'll ex see exactly why I say that fruits cannot evolve, but they're forced to. Let's take a look at an example. Now let's look at a natural peach from 4000 BC. This is a natural peach. Uh, I know it doesn't look like a peach. It looks more like a grape and cherry mixed together. But uh, it, it is a peach genetically. Uh, it's only 25 millimeters big. It has 64% edible flesh. It has very waxy skin. It's 36% stone and it tastes earthy, sweet, sour, and a little bit salty sometimes. So as you can see, this would not be at all very pleasant to eat. And there, there's only three known varieties and they're only found in China, that's it. These things are 71% water, 8% sugars, and 20 not, or 21% uh, other uh, substances. This is the artificial peach with which we all know. The reason I say artificial is because first of all, species, uh, I mean, a fruit cannot evolve. So what us humans and farmers did is we actually created a special type of peach, which is the peach that we see right here. Uh, this is the classic peach that we all see in supermarkets right now. 
Uh, so it has 90% edible flesh, uh, it has soft edible skin, uh, it has around 10% stone in the middle, uh, it's 100 millimeters big which is 64 times larger than its ancient uh, ancestor. And so this is the modern version and if we look at its ancestor this has three known varieties however this peach has over 200 known varieties which is a 67 fold increase in the amount of varieties that uh, a fruit that this fruit has. And this is now known in 13 different countries that's a lot more countries that it can be grown in than just one China. Okay, uh, so these are 90% water, 8.5% sugars, and around 2% other substances. So again, these are called artificial because these are created by artificial breeding, meaning they aren't a national, I mean, I mean uh, natural uh, breed of uh, peach. They're actually artificially created, but they're not unhealthy at all, if, if you think that's what I'm saying. Now let's take a look at another example, the watermelon. Yeah, it doesn't look like a watermelon at all. Not neither does it to me. This is very nutty. It's around 50 millimeters big. You have to om open this with a hammer or a sharp object. You have to just keep hitting it repeatedly, repeatedly, and it has an extremely bitter taste. You could sometimes find ones that are bitter sweet, but they're always going to be bitter. And these things actually cause inflammation, and they're only found in Namibia and also Botswana. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing those right. Uh, there's only six known varieties, they're 80% water, they're 1.9% sugars, and 18% others. Now let's look at our artificial watermelon. Our artificial watermelon has quite a few different shapes. It's much bigger, it reduces inflammation, some varieties are seedless, and just to compare how uh, much softer these things are, this is a natural watermelon which has to be opened with a hammer or a sharp object. This is our artificial watermelon that has to be opened by dropping it from one meter. That's how soft it is. And these are very, like, actually sweet and juicy and just not dry. And they're not nutty at all, if you think about it. And these things are available in four different colors. And if we go back here, we see that the natural watermelon only has six known varieties. However, now we have over 100, I mean 1,200 varieties. This is a 200-fold increase in the amount of varieties that we have for watermelon. And you won't know this because when you go into a store, you only see one or two different varieties of watermelon, mainly only seeded and seedless. But these are actually 1,200 different varieties of watermelon compared to the traditional six. So now uh, watermelons before were only, uh, only in two countries. Now they are in 15 countries. And these things are 91.5% water, 6.2% sugars, and 2.3% other substances. Now I'm going to show you something that you really won't believe. This is the hardest one to believe yet. You, you won't even believe that this exists at all. This tiny thing. This is only 19 millimeters big. You have to peel it by hammering it repeatedly by a hard object, and it tastes like a draw, dry and raw potato. That's how bad it is. And this has five to 10 very hard kernels, and that might have just given it away to you. This is natural corn found in 7000 BC. So there's eight known varieties of this. Uh, it's only found in Central America. It's 75% water, 1.9% sugars, and 23.1% other, mostly starch. Now if we look at our artificial corn, of course, as always, we have it, this thing steam cooks in just minutes. Uh, it's sweet, refreshing, and juicy. It's available in five different colors. It's 190 millimeters. It's around 1,000 times larger than its predecessor. And it's also very easy to peel. You, there's no slamming required. You just use your hands uh, and you're on your way. So as you can see, there's eight known varieties for the natural corn. However, here we have over 200 different varieties of artificial corn. So that's like a 70, 67 fold increase in the amount of varieties. And these, uh, this corn was only found in one country. Now they're find, found in 69 different countries. 
These things are 73.2% water, 6.6% sugars, and 20.2% other. And yeah, that was it for this presentation. And this is a fun fact before I stop now. Uh, did you know there's actually something that scientists are trying their best to do? They've been working on this for five years now. Reverse evolution. Yeah, you heard me right. Reverse evolution. I don't know how this is possible, why they're doing it at all, and how dangerous this is, but they're doing it. So what their goal of the project is, and just before I continue, uh, you must know uh, that the bird is the closest an um, ancestor, uh, I mean, dinosaur, if you take a bird, its closest ancestor would be a dinosaur. But that's wrong, completely wrong. They actually are dinosaurs. So that's why that fact is wrong, if you think about it. Birds are dinosaurs, not their closest r living relative. But if you take chickens, they are dinosaurs' closest real living relative. So what they're trying to do is make chickens bigger, have them bigger teeth, have bigger uh, legs, uh, make them actually walk a little bit better, uh, and also give them tails so that they look more like a dinosaur. Uh, so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to reverse engineer uh, the genes. They're trying to activate those genes uh, that make a chicken more dinosaur-like. Uh, so that's just a fun fact about evolution. Uh, and yeah, that was it. Uh, please comment down below if you have any questions. You can even email me at tajimani at gmail.com. My email will be down in the description if you did not understand that. Uh, and please subscribe to my channel if you like my content and you want to see more of it. Please like the video if you liked it. That really helps. And yeah, goodbye.